Welcome back to TechSpin, and today we have the Midtower Cooler Master Cube 500. On paper, it's a very capable case, able to take even EATX motherboards, the latest GPUs, and 240-280 millimeter radiators, with a key feature being the USB Type-C Gen 2 x 2 for 20 gigabit transfers, which very few cases on the market right now can boast, with the exception of some new ones from MSI. It's also smaller than most mid-tower cases and comes with a vertical GPU adapter. It has flexibility, accessibility, and is worth it over the Q300L, and after showing you assembly, we'll compare those too. If you need a smaller, more portable case, will this be the one? And how easy is assembly and installation for this steel panel case? Let's get to it. The Cooler Master Cube 500 is a solid and sturdy, highly configurable compact case that amazingly fits large motherboards and, on paper, the latest GPUs. It has a Type-C 20 gig port and a max 240-280 mm top, front, bottom, and left side bracket radiator mounts. The case supports orientations including reversed with movable feet and case handle which takes the weight of a full build. The flat pack box is easy to carry home and this is a moderate to advanced build that comes with a cable clip, the Gem Mini. It's not designed for a bottom mounted PSU. In the default top front install location and following the manual, it's the first time I've had PSU wires push down a GPU. That's a new one. You may squeeze a 300 to 320 millimeter GPU in here like this, but we found a workaround. There's an uncovered hole in the back. There's no reset button, bad as you need it for troubleshooting and controlling fan hubs. And there's no fan hub. Good thing there's a video playlist because damn, the manual is an unwieldy large half map size with small drawings. This manual. <laughs> and it's not really understandable until you realize each folded rectangle are pages of a comic book. You know what would make this better? An actual damn Ikea style manual with pages. You know it's bad when a YouTube video is showing you how to read the manual. Christ, can we get a little quality control here? Every case should have a unified front panel connector, but the manual doesn't remind you to hook it up during the basic build and it misses connecting the single included fan entirely. Even though I've been building for years, I was just following the manual and it caught me out. The QR codes are a mess, well, the video tutorial works, but the product and manual QR takes you to a landing page, not the product page. Tech support is locked behind a login, and the QR for 3D prints doesn't work. For airflow and being far easier to build, it's worth the $30 over the Q300L V1 or V2, which are ovens. With our PSU workaround, this is a pretty good small case. The larger, better option is definitely the HALF 500. However, if you're up for a bit of a challenge, then this case is worth it and we recommend it. I'll throw the measurements up here, including the handle and feet, excluding the left side bracket. We have the black, and this comes in white and a macaron color set. The macaron version has upgrades. Two panels times three colored covers of pink, cream, and mint, an additional mint handle, two accessory hooks, and a fan upgrade to ARGB. MSRP is $80 for black and white and $100 for macaron. It comes in this flat pack box and Marco the GPU tuber is here helping a build and his channel links are in the description. Let's step through the full build and as always we recommend you first build on a motherboard box, test then remove power cabling to install it. This is my test bench already assembled with CPU, paste, air cooler and M.2. First step is to attach the motherboard to the tray and all 43 screws for this and the case are the same. Nice. With an internal volume of 33.4 liters, it fits ATX, micro ATX, and ITX boards, and EATX up to 273 millimeters with a regular ATX PSU. CPU coolers up to 172 millimeters fit with the optional left side bracket removed, and if you put a radiator up front, 365 length minus 55 for the radiator it leaves 310 for a GPU, though a fan will fit in front of this and also about a 320 millimeter long gigabyte GPU. The steel panel case comes with either a simple black or a white 120 millimeter fan, depending on your color pick, pre-installed on the rear panel. Before putting on the rear panel, the manual skips attaching the fan connector and the ATX 8 pin CPU power is easiest to put on right now too. I had to remove the back as there's no fan hub and I hadn't hooked up the rear fan yet. Oh, and that has 5.5 centimeters of vertical travel on the rear panel. After that, I reinstalled the GPU again. Unless using ITX, a bottom mounted PSU can't occupy the same area as a motherboard in this space-time continuum. 
Fitting your PSU with an ATX board, try the front top location in the highest spot, a standard length 141mm Antec Neo Eco 1000G M barely fits the GPU. The modular connectors have fairly sharp bends to clear the 320mm long Gigabyte 3070 Ti. We also tried this Asus 3070 at 300mm, which has an easier time fitting. After you lift up the zip tied cabling, you can fit on the front panel. After a bit of test fitting, I cut the zip ties and freed the end to make it easier. For the leftmost type C port lead, I pulled out the power to the PSU. I accidentally did the two body locking screws here. There's actually four front screws that I missed, which you can see here. Next, the bottom and top panels. Note the filter holes for the feet, as that detail is not visible on the instructions. The top here has the cover already installed, pushing the front panel wires through, and note the panels are interchangeable for different build types. It tabs in at the bottom, and then two screws to secure it to the front and back. The top panel tabs in, and as I secure it with two screws, see the Type-C and dual USB around the tiny white LED power button and the audio jack. There's no reset button, a large omission here. Last part is the rear panel and we have feet by the optional side bracket and the tempered glass panel. Putting on the feet, I found it easier to wedge in the flat side than the angled side. Putting on the back is pretty easy. The panel tabs in at the bottom and it snaps right on. Cable routing behind the motherboard has good clearance at 32 millimeters. Radiator support is decent, specs up here, though using one will make your wiring fun, so keep the top and bottom off while you get everything into position and finish testing. So we'll do some testing, show you the workaround, and compare it to the Q300L right after you hit the like button down there. Cause you've been watching this far, you obviously like the video, it's free, and it helps out a lot. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button, and shopping through the affiliate links also supports the channel. So the workaround is, instead of hanging the PSU per instructions, you can flip the bracket vertically and put it in the lowest notch, so it's holding up the PSU. The power extension will reach, though depending on where your socket is, the fan of your PSU might be inside. GPU in, there's still 15 millimeters clearance and no wires now pushing down the GPU. The top lid is still able to close without issue. You will lose the ability to use a screw to lock in the PSU in place, but as the lowest notch is angled up and the wires are pressing down, mine won't move, just be careful when transporting. We roasted the Q300L because the panels didn't allow sufficient airflow. The non-removable panels with the extra interior flange made even a 300mm GPU installation hard. I had to remove fans and front I.O. so many times to troubleshoot, wedge in the GPU and fit components. Non-adjustable case fan locations made top mounting and AIO impossible, and rear I.O. covers were bend off, which are terrible. Before taking an angle grinder to it, it was an oven. The Cooler Master Q500 vastly improves on this, and building with removable panels is far easier. Case fan mounting is easy with good airflow, and adding a radiator or fans should make it great. Relocation of the front I.O. to the top was smart, and they added a Type-C Gen 2x2, excellent. But we lost a reset button, and the ability to put a PSU at the bottom with even an MATX motherboard as it blocks headers and touches that Time 16 slot tab. If you could put it there, you'd have to remove slot covers to make a hole, so this was obviously an afterthought. This 3 slot 3070Ti is 55mm high, and there's 1cm clearance to the PSU here, and for comparison, the Q300L with better clearance. So the PSU must go top front, and if your PSU has a mode switch, that'll be inaccessible being inside. Wiring was constantly challenging in the Q300L, but in the Q500 with the PSU workaround, this one's much better. After spending a week building in it, the Cooler Master Q500 is designed very well, and the steel construction and quality is on par with their best cases. The panels are stiff, and rubber grommets hold, well, especially the front, <laughs> and will protect filters while delivering good airflow. With easy top and bottom panel removal, accessibility is high, fantastic as building in a small case always has its challenges. You can change I.O. position, handle position, the feet can fit into any pair of holes too for flexibility, and there's a whole bunch of 3D printed accessories that work with the case. Before our PSU workaround, it was difficult to fit in a GPU longer than 300 millimeters, but now the Cube 500 becomes much more usable, especially for a test bench. For improvement, no bottom PSU mounting is ugh. This case could really use an extra 30 millimeters of height. 
and Free Idea Cooler Master, the angled front I.O. wastes almost 30 millimeters of space as the components come out at an angle. Why not make a triangle strip and have them come out at a flat 90? Drawing similarities to IKEA may be inevitable, but Cooler Master didn't have one of their manuals, as the order on a map size paper is nonsensical and it's not just me. It needs a renumbering fix to like 1112, 2122, and so on. In a manual with actual pages, this design would work as the page edge is the border. Smart, hey? The drawings are too small, needlessly stuffed into boxes, and missing reminders to attach wires. You put in so much effort to make this simple, and this is garbage. <laughs> QR codes need to go to the correct links and drop the support login registration requirement. On the product page, there's no manual, only a product sheet. After logging into their support, I wasn't able to find a manual there, nor from a direct Google search, so it doesn't appear to be online. If you absolutely need a small case, the Cube 500 is a tight little build, pun intended. However, the Half 500, link up here, is a larger, vastly superior case with a ludicrous amount of GPU clearance at 410mm, dual 200mm ARGB front fans, and a 120 ARGB rear connect up to an ARGB hub there's a removable top and more, all for roughly the same price. If you pick up the Cooler Master Cube 500 or another case, shopping through our affiliate links below will help us here with no extra cost to you. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Techspin Review, and there's companion posts to our reviews on TechspinReview.com. Let's pick a viewer question, and this one is from Leslie Crowley 9132 who asks, why doesn't the sound work when playing PS5? With the advent of higher than 60 FPS console gaming, instead of buying a new TV, many consumers are looking to cheap, fast monitors instead of upgrading their big screen. While you do save money, many monitors, like this one, don't come with built-in speakers. HDMI passes video and audio together, and this is why in Windows you'll see even speakerless monitors as an audio option. So you'll need to plug in speakers using a 3.5mm jack into the back of a monitor to get sound. Hope this helps. That's it for today, and let us know your thoughts and experience with this case, or tell us about your new one. And if you're considering buying something different, we'll try to select a couple of hot picks from your recommendations. Whether it's cases or other tech, let us know what you'd like to see reviewed next. Join the discussion in the comments, and please hit like, subscribe, the bell, to see upcoming episodes. As always, we really appreciate you watching this far, thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.